Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up Lime FreeDS on your Android device. I'm using a phone, but you can use an Android tablet as well. This will allow you to play Nintendo 3DS games. Just want to state that this is for educational purposes only. This video does not condone piracy for legal reasons. You should have ripped the keys yourself from your own console. You should rip your own games, etc., etc. But you know, honestly, we all know it's easy to grab hold of these keys and games from the internet anyway. And if you have any questions in general, feel free to post it down in the comments below. So first of all, you want to download Lime Free DS. Open up your web browser. This is not available on the Play Store, so you'll have to search for Lime Free DS. Go to the website. I'll actually provide a link to the website directly. But you go to Releases, go to the latest released, scroll down, click Lime Free DS, the Android Universal APK. This will download it. I'm going to click Cancel because I've already got it downloaded. And now, what we want to do is open up our file manager. So, files. If you are using an alternative one, feel free to. It doesn't really matter. Click that. I'm going to go to download. And here, I've got the AES underscore keys.txt. Again, I can't show you where to get this from, but if you Google it, you can easily find it. These are used to play encrypted games, but you can get a lot of games that are decrypted. They're pretty easy to get hold of, or you do them yourself. So, you, you know you don't always need this but you know it's always good to have so now to install line 3 ds click on the apk you'll pop up with this if it pops up saying that you know file doesn't have permission to you know do it you know you just go through the process you provide the permission so just click install this is now being installed before we load it up and set up the emulator we need to extract our game it's in a dot zip file so it might be in a .3ds, which will be like in, unencrypted, decrypted, and all like a .cia, which you can install. This is .3ds, so to, you know, unzip it, you literally just press it, click extract. You can unzip a .7z file as well, but again, feel free to use an alternative tool if you want to. Click finish. You can now, so if I just go to downloads all, you can now delete the original zip file. What I'm going to do is click three dots on one of these files, click select, and select everything that has been added except the game, which is for me 537 megabytes. Click delete, move five files, and now we have the game and the AES keys and line 3 ds Now we select the game, go to copy to internal storage. And I recommend in here you create a new folder. I'm going to call this emulation. Emulation in and into the storage. So where is it? Emulation. So it's copied there. I didn't actually want it. So that's my bad. I need to create a new folder. In here, I'm going to put line. 3ds inside of there i'm going to create one more folder i'm going to call it roms so this is where all my games will appear now if we go back to emulation click three dots click move to internal storage and if i just move it to emulation line 3ds roms move here now that the game is here and then the rest of the you know line 3ds files will also go in this folder right here now we can launch up the game would handle the AES keys very soon. So launch up, I mean the emulator, click get started, grant permission, click allow, click next, grant permission while using the app, click next, grant permission while using the app, click next, select user folder, click select. From here, you wanna select the emulation folder, line 3DS and click use this folder. So now select that, click next, now the games folder, press plus, you want to select that ROMs folder, now select use this folder, click next, all done, the game now appears. And you could also, you know, search as well if you have loads of games, I've only got the one so it's easy to deal with. Now let's install the AES keys. Go back, go to your file manager, and in here there'll be a folder called sysdata, this is where you need to put those keys. 
So if I go to internal storage, download, copy the keys, copy it to internal storage, emulation, Lime 3 ds sys data, copy here, and that's it. That's the keys now installed as well. Now before we launch up the game, you could launch it up, but I'm just going to show you some settings. Go to the three dots. And the main thing you'll want to deal with is either like install CIA files. So if you have any CIA files that you need to install, mark.3ds up and it's launch you up directly. And then you can always change the user folder and games folder as well and the theme and color. But go to settings in general. You can click limit speed. So if you want it as a percentage of your normal speed, and leave that as 100%. In system, you can select your username, which obviously will appear. Now you can select the country, the you know your birthday as well, because some games are linked with the birthday, and you can put like the 3GX plugin loader as well. And you can obviously do a clock, you can simulate clock as well, so it changes the time. If we go to camera, you can change the camera source as well if you want to, and same with like the outer left and outer right. Because remember, you could technically take 3D photos. And if we go to gamepad, you can map your controls. For touch screen control, nothing you need to do. If you have an external controller connected like a PS4, Xbox, PS5, Nintendo Switch controller, which I'll have separate videos covering very soon, let me know what you would like to see. Then you select one of the buttons, press the button on the controller, and you're good to go. If we go back, go to graphics. In here, you want to enable asynchronous shader compilation. This just helps, you know, when shaders are loading in during the gameplay, it'll help reduce lag and stuttering. Now the graphics API, select Vulkan if it's available. If not, select OpenGL, but I have Vulkan. Now internal resolution. I know a lot of people just select the highest one. They'll be like, go to 10 or go to four or five or six, something like that. My recommendation is choose native, get it working, because depending on how old your device is, you might just barely be able to get good performance on native. So get it working on native, then change it afterwards and increase it so it looks sharper. And that's pretty much it. You don't really need to mess around with anything else right here. So like I said, you can come back with internal resolution later. In audio, you can leave this as is. Audio input device, again, leave that as auto. And that's it, click back. And now we'll go to the game section. If I keep the game pressed here, you can add a cheat. If I click plus, you can name the cheat, put a little note, and then put the code as well. So that's how you add cheats. And now we just launch the game by pressing it. I've just turned the volume fully down. And so as you can see, I'm literally using the to screen to interact with what is essentially the bottom screen. The top screen will appear in second, because for this game, the bottom screen appears first. And so now if I click solo play, but you can also use the controls. So I'm just going to show you a bit of gameplay and then that's it. That is how you set up Lime 3DS on Android to play 3DS games. There'll be one little last thing I'll show you once I get into the game and I'm playing. I'll show you save and load states. You can rotate the device as well to have you know, a different configuration, feel free to have a look at that as well. Okay, click right, click A. And now we can play. So you can use your physical controller if you have one mapped, or you can use. Oh, I did terribly there. I'm going to have one more go before I wrap up and show you these save states.
Hmm. Pretty cool. Okay, so now the final thing I want to show you is the menu system of the emulator that allows you to do stuff like load and save. Stage two, access the menu, you want to press the back button. So for me, pressing back is swiping from the edge of the screen. Now you can pause emulation, you can save states, you can change the overlay options, so you can you know mess around with the controls directly here. And like the, the D pad slides a bit, you know, if you're nearing, you touch it, you can adjust, you know, all sorts of stuff. Your amiibo, you can, you know, land screen layout as well. You can do swap screens, unlock draw, cheats as well, whilst you're here for the game. But now the main thing I want to show you is save state. This is really awesome. Click save state, save state, select your slot, and that's it. Now if I'm gonna I'm gonna go to close the game, I'm going to reopen it. So this is going through the process of loading up the game. Pretty straightforward, but now watch this. If I click back, save states, load state, click that. It has now loaded it back where I left. Oh, so that's fantastic. It means you're not reliant on the built-in saving system of the game you can save it wherever and whenever and just reload it straight away which is fantastic so that's it that is how you set up the lime 3ds emulator on android if you have any questions about anything feel free to comment down below if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in the next awesome emulation video take care bye